Children have the remarkable ability to learn language without any formal teaching. They're able to learn what sounds should be produced in their language, a large number of words, the meaning of those words, how to string those words together into sentences, and even how to take turns in conversation. We start at the very beginning. How do children learn to perceive differences in speech sounds, and when do they lose that ability? Surprisingly, speech perception begins in the womb. De Casper and Spence ran an experiment with the book Cat in the Hat. Pregnant women were asked to read Cat in the Hat to their unborn child at least two times a day for over two and a half months. Now look what you did, said the fish to the cat. Now look at this house, look at this, look at that. What's important about this experiment is that books, unlike other modes of speech, always carry the same sounds, the same rhythm, and the same stress, especially when read by the same person. When the child is born, a little test begins. Researchers used a high amplitude sucking device to measure how much attention babies pay to auditory stimuli. If the sucking rate increases while listening to some stimulus, then the baby is paying more attention. This could be because the sounds are novel, or because they're simply familiar with those sounds. So, two days after birth, De Casper and Spence played tape recordings of Cat in the Hat and two other unfamiliar stories. It was found that babies increased their sucking rate when listening to Cat in the Hat, but not to the other stories. This experiment showed that children, even when in the womb, are listening to the rhythm, cadence, stress, and sound order of words and sentences being spoken. But how do we go from familiar with sounds to proving that babies can tell speech sounds apart from each other? How do they know that the T in teal and D in deal are important distinctions in English? In some languages, there are no differences in perception between those two sounds. The mechanism behind this phenomenon is called categorical perception. The idea is that humans are able to differentiate important sounds in a language, those that make a difference for word meanings, from unimportant sounds, those that make no difference. For example, in English it makes no difference whether I say map, releasing the P at the end, or map, not releasing the P. Those sounds are not distinct for perception in English. Take Japanese as another example. Whether you've seen it on YouTube or learned about it in a class, Japanese speakers cannot differentiate between the R and L sounds. Why? That contrast is not important to Japanese speakers. Neither of those sounds are important for meaning. In English, it's a bigger deal. Children learn to categorize sounds that are important, so English speakers would categorize R and L separately, but Japanese speakers wouldn't. What may be surprising is that all babies are able to distinguish between every speech sound from all languages when they're born. Worker and Tease ran a study to see whether babies could distinguish between a sound contrast in Hindi and a sound contrast in Salish. English, Hindi, and Salish babies had no problems with this task when they were between 6 and 8 months old, but around 10 months old, English infants could no longer tell the difference between the contrasts, only showing a 20% accuracy rating, while Salish and Hindi infants had no problems with it, showing a perfect 100% accuracy rating when discriminating between those sounds. We don't lose our ability to do this totally. Even adults can tell the difference between some sounds they've never heard before. Take clicks, for example. Even without training, adults can tell that two different clicks are not alike. It's the sounds that are produced very similarly to each other that we struggle with. Why does this happen? One of the leading theories in the field is called Native Language Magnet Theory. It states that infants begin life with categorical perception, but language exposure is needed to fine-tune that perception. When infants are exposed to language, 
neural pathways are modified until they achieve native language neural commitment, which is a neural network required to perceive a particular language. In simpler terms, the brain becomes hardwired to categorize sounds as regular speakers of that language. In theory, infants are exposed to a wide variety of sounds spoken by different people with different pitches, lengths, and small variations in sound production. Native language magnet theory explains that infants develop sound prototypes and figure out, when a sound is produced, which prototype it mostly resembles. In the real world, we have prototypes for everything. If we see a flat board with four legs and we have to decide whether that thing is a table or chair, we imagine our prototypes in our mind to see which one it matches best. If it has a back, it's a chair. If it has no back, it's probably a table. Maybe it's a stool. This same process happens with sounds. And because language input is different across all languages, the prototypes in each language will vary from each other. An English infant may have 11 prototypes for vowels, while a Japanese infant will only have 5 prototypes for vowels because that's what the language requires. Over time, prototypes are set, and after around 10 months of age, nearly every sound heard by the infant will be mapped to one of those prototypes. This is the leading cognitive theory of how children learn to discriminate between speech sounds, although really, it's more like they're born with it and they lose that ability over time. How do children learn to produce these sounds? Well, that's a mystery for another day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give a like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.